Hello friends, I hope you are enjoying my videos and enjoying the British summer. Today we will discuss another very important topic for MSCBCH clinical examination that is on H. pylori infection. You may expect this question in your history station or your video station. Be well prepared before it getting too late. this video we will discuss about the epidemiology as well as the pathophysiology of H. pylori infection. We will discuss the clinical features and understand the diagnosis procedure. We need to know how to manage the patient and how to eradicate the infection and we need to understand the follow-up. Let's start with what is H. pylori? H. pylori is a spiral shaped gram-negative bacteria. It colonizes in gastric mucosa. It causes peptic ulcer disease, chronic gastritis, as well as gastric carcinoma, which is a long-term risk. H. pylori affects almost 50% of the global population. It is much more prevalent in developing countries and the mode of infection is fecal-oral or oral-oral. Most of the time, it is acquired in the early childhood, so we need to be very cautious. What are the risk factors for H. pylori infection in children? First, poor socioeconomic condition, which may be associated with overcrowding and poor sanitation, and close contact with infected person. Most common presentation of H. pylori infection is asymptomatic. Most of the time, they are carrier. Rest of the patient may present with acute or chronic tummy pain, may be associated with nausea and vomiting. Sometimes bloating, poor appetite also noted. And these people may suffer from un unexplained iron deficiency anemia and gastric bleeding rarely associated. Now the big question is when to test a person. First of all, if we suspected peptic ulcers, if there is confirmed case of peptic or gastric ulcers, if there is a family history of gastric malignancy and in case of unexplained iron deficiency anemia. What are the diagnostic methods? First of all, urea based test. It is very useful and it is non-invasive, which is done at more than six years of age. The other useful alternative is stool antigen test. Third one is IgG, that is a serology test, but it is not recommended for the children. The gold standard test is endoscopy and biopsy. It confirms the histopathology as well as a rapid urea test. Now we will discuss about the medical management. The mnemonic is CAP. C stands for clarithromycin or metronidazole. A stands for amoxicillin. P stands for PPI that is omeprazole. We need to continue the therapy for 14 days. In resistant th cases, we need to consider the quadruple therapy as well as we need to consider the local resistant pattern and culture guided therapy. How to do follow up in a case of H. pylori infection? We need to consider follow up in four to eight weeks time. We need to do the urea bed test as well as stool antigen test. Serology test is not indicated and we need to do retreatment if eradication fails. What are the complications of H. pylori infection? First of all, peptic ulcer disease, chronic gastritis, iron deficiency anemia, in rare cases gastric carcinoma or malt lymphoma. Let's discuss the key point of today's presentation. First of all, we need to do the test when it is clearly indicated. Next, we need to do the no. invasive test because it is much more preferred. Third, we need to confirm the eradication and if treatment fails, address the antibiotic resistance. I hope this video is useful for your exam. Please do comment and let me know which uncommon topic you want to discuss in my next video. Till then, enjoy the time and best of luck for your future examination.